Hello. This is Mary Lynn Van Sweeten with Partners in Technology. This video is going to demonstrate how to return goods to a vendor in Sage 100. We're looking on screen at Sage 100C version 2018 with all the service packs and enhancements installed. We're looking at a purchase order that has been fully received. You'll notice out on our first line, we've ordered two, we've received two, and we've invoiced two. However, we found that one of our items is defective and we want to return it. To do that, I'm simply going to go to the menu in the purchase order module for material re re requisition and return. The return of goods entry is where I'm going to enter my data. Let's select the re next return number and let's select our purchase order number. I don't have a credit memo yet, but I do have an authorization number that has been provided by the vendor. Coming to the Lines tab, I can say that I either want to return the entire purchase order, or in my case, I want to be able to just return the one item. Had I answered no, I would have only had to enter the one item here, and I would not have had to correct Line 2. We now have a return for $83. When I update this return, I'm first going to see a form that I can send to the warehouse showing the one returned. I can send this with my package and it's going to go to this vendor and we can see that it's this item. That's going to help both my vendor and it's going to help my warehouse. I'm going to update the register, and I'm updating the register using the paperless office so that I will be storing the register as a PDF on my server. You can see here our a return goods register for our $83.50, I'm sorry, and let's update this, and then let's take a peek at the journal entry that is produced. What we're going to see is our inventory is being reduced and we're going to have a debit to our purchases clearing account. Normally when we have inventory transactions we would see a credit to our purchases clearing account because this is recording the liability. Well in this case we're anticipating a credit memo from our vendor. Let's update that. If we go and take a look at our purchase order, we're going to see on the lines now that we've ordered one. We have a back order because we could be anticipating another uh, a, a return. You could see that we've only received one, but we've invoiced two. So when we receive our credit memo from our vendor, we're, we need to record that too, and we're going to do that also in the purchase order module. We will not be recording that in accounts payable. I'm going to use receipt of invoice entry. Let's find our purchase order, enter our credit memo number, come to our lines, and we see that we're going to have to deal with our invoice quantity. If we look down at the bottom, you can see that we have two. We can uh, confirm that we have only received one. So now I'm going to put in a minus invoice. I know you're thinking in other places in Sage, you would put a credit memo as a positive and then Sage translates it into a credit. Not this time, because we're actually doing this in a receipt of invoice. Let's go ahead and go to the totals. Let's accept, and then let's update this. Here's our register, showing our invoice to minus. We're going to see a credit memo of $83.50 on our vendor's account. We'll update this, 
and we'll go ahead and print the register as well to post it to General Ledger. What we will be seeing is a debit to accounts payable and a credit to purchases clearing. Our purchases clearing now has been zeroed out for this purchase order and this return. Going back into the purchase order, we're going to see that it is, it is showing that it is on back order. Let's look at the lines. Our quantity received is 1 and our quantity invoiced is now 1. So we have either resolved this purchase order or we're going to leave it open because we're anticipating receiving a replacement item. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the quantity order to 1 because then in our case we are not asking for a return. This back order or this uh, purchase order was on a back order status. Once I hit accept, you will now see that this order has been complete. I'm no longer anticipating any further activity on this purchase order. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscri subscribe to our YouTube channel. Each time we post a new video, you'll be notified that it's there and you'll be able to see it. Thanks for watching.